evening to you. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, one popped off today. Um, <clears throat> and I was explaining the band aid too. So this morning, I had an EKG done and some lab work done for the bariatric surgery that I plan on getting in June. Um, so I had to go to another city to go to the hospital to uh, get my lab tests and stuff done. You can't eat after 12 a.m. the previous night, so I was starving. And then my veins are really messed up. So they always have to pull from different places, like my hand. Um, a couple of years ago, they had to pull from my neck. So yeah, not fun. But I caught on a few years back. Well, not a few years back, more like a decade and some change back. I caught on because I'm not going to let you keep sticking me knowing you're not going to find it. Every nurse has that issue. So I started just telling them when I was around maybe 19 or 20, I started telling them, hey, I have rolling veins. They're very small, so I might need to go on my hand. So they started listening and started going in my hand. Um... I was supposed to vlog earlier, but I was super tired, super hangry. Um, and then something about when they pull blood, it just makes you tired. And they pulled like seven, maybe eight. Felt like a little eight. Um, cat's not that long. <coughs> so I was tired. When I got home, I ate some Chick-fil-A and then I was out. The grilled chicken sandwich. <laughs> I was out after that, took a nap. So, because my day is different from everybody else's, now I will get up and do whatever housework that I didn't get to this morning because when I sat past, I passed out. Um, so, a little quick story time because someone asked and um, I'll insert more pictures. So, this scar, I got into a car accident on May, say 24th, whatever Labor Day weekend, <clears throat> it was that Sunday of 2020, whatever date that was. Um, I was doing a surprise get together for my girlfriend. We had just well, she had just uh, met the criteria for the club that we were in. So I was surprising her. And I'm and I'm saying her. I know it's he. I'm saying her. This is before transitioning. Um, <clears throat> for anyone who gets hung up on the pronouns. Um, you know, it was supposed to be a surprise. We all were excited. Um... We were, she just thought we was having just a regular Labor Day get together. So we were headed to my mom's house to pick up the mac and cheese that she made. And she made spawn mac and cheese. And um, it was a few other things that we were picking up. So we were on the route to my mom's house. And while she was driving, my phone started to ring and it was her mother, but I didn't want to pick up. And she, um, I didn't want to pick up on my watch because then baby would hear what his mom was saying. So I tried to reach in the back for my phone and my bag is usually never in the back seat. That's how I know. <clears throat> I usually know when something's gonna happen before it happens and I'm not saying I'm psychic. I have a lot of deja, deja vu and my instincts, my instincts will go off that morning before something terrible happens later on in that day. Like there is, I'll get like key points, almost like final destination. I'm not getting visions or anything, but I'll get thoughts um, or if something doesn't go right leading up, it'll be like three or four things that don't go right leading up to that afternoon or that day. And that'll kind of let me know like something's gonna happen. So 
I'll rewind a little bit to my first accident where I messed my knee up. <clears throat> it was like March of 2013. It's like March 8th or something like that. And me, my sister, and her best friend at the time was on our way to a club. So prior to us all getting together, right? I had asked um, my best friend if she wanted to go. She didn't. She said she didn't want to go that night. Which, whenever I asked about the club, she's usually down. That night, she didn't feel like going. So, that was, like, the first thing. Because she just started telling me no at, like, 30. <laughs> whenever, in our early 20s, whenever I hit her up for the club, which we was living together at the time. Whenever I asked about the club, her ass is going. She'd be like, ooh, let me figure out when I'm wet. This particular night, she said no. So that was the first thing. And then we uh, rode with my sister's friend. And when she came and got me, we were heading down. I won't say the street. But we were heading down the street before we got to, well, we were by her house. And I heard a pop noise. But nobody else heard it in the car. And I don't know if the tire was already flat. No, because we would have felt it. We was in an SUV. So it sounded like a pop, but the car was still driving fine. So we get um, on the interstate. Um, I wasn't drinking yet. I had had a Capri Sun. You know. <laughs> My, uh, our friend had just had a baby. So, you know. <laughs> got them stamps on that. So, <laughs> I was drinking a Capri Sun. I wasn't even drinking alcohol at the time. Um, I was wearing the dress that my sister hates. And I had on, like, some six-inch six inch, um, wedges or platforms. You know, you know, wedges was the thing, was the tease, you know, in the 2000s. You look, now you want the shit if you ain't had a wedge on. So, <clears throat> I think I kept those shoes too. So, we're getting on the interstate. Um, whenever my sister's tipsy or whenever we're all tipsy, we... Get to talking about God. Look, they say bring them everywhere you go. We was talking about God. We was listening to old music from like the early 2000s. Like stuff that was already old when we were listening to it in 2013. So, <clears throat> so, so far it was the, my best friend declining to go. And the popping noise I heard, but nobody else heard. So we get on the interstate, we're going the speed limit, we get through the tunnel, coming out the tunnel, we hear a boom. So my sister's like, what the hell was that? And I look back out the out the window and I was like, that was the tire. So everyone's thinking it's just a regular, oh, tire pop, let's pull over and, you know, triple A come, blah, blah, blah. It's just gonna be a long night. So that turns into swerving swerve left to the left lane swerve right and then swerve left again and thankfully so the people behind us have seen what happened so they kind of like slowed down already because we was losing control of the car so when we swerved left that third time we flipped we flipped three times on the bridge so we landed with the roof. We landed on top of the roof, upside down, windows and everything were out. The windshield was still in, but I think all the other windows was out. The back windows, most definitely in the rear. <clears throat> I did not have on a seat belt while I was in the back seat, which they say by law in our state that you're not required to unless you're a child or of a certain height. As an adult, you don't have to wear your uh, seatbelt in the back seat. They're not gonna give you a ticket if you don't have it on in the back seat. So it's just good that you wear it. <sighs> so my sister and her friend 
stay put um they stay put they didn't hey they didn't move around me on the other hand i was rolling around in the car because i was back there with a whole lot of space so my body was just rolling around like a ball in a pinball machine so by the time the truck landed when it hit boom on its ceiling i hit shortly after that i slammed down on my left side so they were trying to get out of the car because at this point the car was unstable it was leaking oil and stuff we didn't want it to blow up so a few people had stopped um some guys on motorcycles who ended up being emts they stopped and um started helping us out a few other people had pulled over behind us and started helping us out and i could not move so my sister was like what's wrong what's wrong and i was like i i don't know i can't i can't move my arm so the way i landed i landed on my full left side leg arm everything they uh went to try to pull me out they pulled me by my right side and that's when I noticed, like, I think something's wrong with my arm. If my arm isn't broken, my wrist is broken, something's broken in my left arm because it hurts like hell and I can't move it. So, <clears throat> it was this nice young lady that had pulled over behind us. She said she saw us flipping and she immediately, like, started slowing down. She didn't slam on brakes so she caused nothing else. But she, uh, she immediately slowed down and pulled over. Um, we were able to start making phone calls, calling my parents and stuff. And I was trying to get a hold of my boyfriend at the time because he was in a whole nother city. We were headed to one city that was about, the club was about 30 minutes away and he was heading to the oceanfront, which is about 30 minutes the opposite direction. So to get from the oceanfront to where we were, now in traffic damn near an hour so he usually doesn't answer unknown numbers which was crazy because this night he answered so he answered and i'm crying i couldn't even get the words out because i was just so shaken up i was looking at the vehicle and then I was just like amazed because we were so close to going over. So I was just like, wow, we're, we're still here. So I'm in shock. I'm crying because I'm grateful. I'm crying because I'm scared and just a whole bunch of mixed emotions. So he answers and the lady tells him, you know, your girlfriend and her family was just in a car accident on the bridge. Um, They've called 911. We're waiting on help now. They have to come through the traffic. Are you able to come meet her at the hospital? And he was like, find out which hospital they're going to and I'll be there. Because my phone flew. I don't know where my phone was. And I was able to, while I, before I got out of the car, I was able to take off my shoes. Because I was not about to be stumbling, fumbling on, gla on glass in six inch heels. That was not about to happen. So I was able to, with my right hand, because I am right-handed, I was able to get the heels off. <clears throat> so fast forward, because we spent the night at the hospital, did a whole bunch of techno shots and stuff. So to this day, when it rains, or if it's really, really cold, I'll feel it in my knees, because my knees slapped. They slapped the ceiling when I landed. Um, my right knee, especially, I feel it. Um, so the more more recent one, when I say I feel stuff before it happens, I never put my phone in the back seat. I always have my phone in my hand because I'm always hooking it up to the radio. I'm always talking and ready. So that was uh, one thing. And then 
I usually call my mom on road trips. I usually call her when we're on our way back and when we're on our way there. Or if I ever need her, but I especially call her on the way there, on the way back. Because she prays over us. And I did not do that this time. So, that was another one. Another mishap. So, on the way back, we are, like I said, we were heading to my mom's house to pick up some stuff for the uh, get-together. And... I got distracted because I was trying to get my phone and then Dre got distracted because he was trying to help me get my phone. So in the midst of helping me get my phone, he turns back around and something runs across the road. We hit a pole. Because I had turned around to get my phone from the back seat, I didn't have on the seat belt. So. I hit the windshield. That's why it's very important to keep your seatbelt on at all times. If that phone ring, let it ring, or you pull over till you can get it. Until then, it's not more important in your life. So that's how I got this scar. Um, what came along with it, it was a concussion. Um, I still have some tenderness, I still have migraines. Um, my hair fell out. So this is what I got now. Not much, but my sister's a wig maker, so look at God. Um, yeah, I had uh locks prior to and When my aunt went to give me a detox, anyone that knows about locks or had locks previously, you know you have to get them detoxed every once in a while. Um, I would do like once a month or once every three months or so like that because of my hair texture. So when she went to do the detox, it was falling out in the water. I mean, in whole pieces. And because I um, lost muscle, they had to sew my muscle back together. So that's the reason why there's still tenderness in the middle of my head, just touching it. Um, even so, a year later, <clears throat> and... I do that a lot too. Lose my train of thought. I have short term memory loss. Um, my family has to remind me of conversations, has to remind me of little stuff like we keep a calendar now so I can keep up with bills. Um, I'm easily irritated still yo people want me to kiss they ass so bad like they want me to kiss it smack it uh spread it everything wipe it when they shit i'm 29 about to be 30 i'm not about to kiss no grown person's ass that's dead that's dead i don't know how you could have thought that was okay no i'm not about to do that mm -mm. yo hey y'all this is a lesson for everybody. If a person says, leave them alone, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Because things can turn disrespectful real fast. And we all don't want that. So when people say, leave them alone, leave them alone. Um, I've developed anxiety, I've developed depression, a lot of stuff that I didn't used to have came with this head injury. Um, a lot of times I, 
a smile about it. Because it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. I cannot be here right now. So, and I just thank God that we weren't going that fast. Because if this had happened on an interstate or something, I probably would not be here. So, definitely very grateful. But, yeah. That's what happened. That's why I have this.